Hey there guys, Andrew Berg here, hope you've been doing well. Welcome to the 10th video of the MTCNA Routers version 7 playlist, where we will be taking a look at how to remove our configuration off of our Microtik devices. How do we perform a factory reset, or how do we just get rid of our configuration so that the default configuration can be loaded up from scratch again, in case we make some mistake and we want to just redo things again. This is the video to show you the different ways that we can potentially do a factory reset. I will cover net install in a separate video, but this will mainly be looking at how to do a factory reset through the Microtech software, as well as how you can do a physical factory reset on your Microtech devices as well. So stick around and let's learn a little bit about how to factory reset our devices. So let's get this started by performing our first factory reset. And it's actually so simple and straightforward. The steps are pretty much the same, be it doing it through Winbox, Webfig, or even the terminal. So all that we want to do is access our Microtik. So I will do this via Winbox quickly. Once I'm on Winbox, I can just find my Microtik and connect onto it. And the moment I've connected onto the Microtik, this is a very straightforward process. All that we need to do is click on our system menu, and then from the system, we can go to the reset configuration option. Now this will actually list various different sub options that we can run with a reset, which can be very useful for us as administrators because we could do stuff like keep our current users. We can run additional scripts afterwards. We could do a ton of different things. So let's just click on this button and see exactly what it allows us to do. And here we can see we've got the option to keep our users. And this is so useful if you've configured some custom administrators with their own details to authenticate with, and you're already comfortable with them and you don't want to lose those credentials, you can just keep the user credentials and it can reset everything else for you. So this way you can still log in with the admin and whatever the password you've made it instead of having to redo everything and maybe find that super long password on the placard that came with your new fancy Microtech device. That's there. We've also got stuff like the CAPS mode, which is more or less related to the Microtik Wi-Fi stuff. This is not covered by the MTCNA specifically, but it's maybe just worth noting that the option is there. You can even set that it should boot up with no default configuration. And all that means is the moment the factory reset's done, it's not going to prompt you that there's some default configuration on the device, and it's not going to have any default configuration. You won't have stuff like a DHCP client configured already on your WAN 1 interface or Ether 1. You won't have stuff like a bridge configured, no firewall rules, the router will be completely barren. Why would you want that? Well, maybe you're some type of supplier or ISP and you want these devices to be pretty much blank where you define your own stuff from scratch. So. That is why that could be potentially useful. You could even do something like a do not backup. And this is a thing that saves a lot of people. And not if you tick this, but by default, Microtik allows you to run a backup script or not script, the backup file for the Microtik. So that if you maybe want to roll back to this current configuration, you can easily do so by just restoring this backup that it takes before the reset super cool and then we can even do stuff like run after reset which just allows you to run a custom Microtik script after the device boots up again because maybe you've got some custom script files similar to the Microtik custom or the Microtik default configuration where you're defining all of the details already for the Microtik and it can just do that the moment it boots up kind of a lot like zero touch provisioning if you think about it you're not really doing anything you just turn it on and it's configuring itself that is so cool and useful as well. Now, I just want to showcase that you do have the same options available from the terminal. So if I just go into a terminal session quickly, if I do a system reset configuration, if we tab this, we can see the additional options available to us. And pretty much everything is exactly the same. Just the one big thing that you might see that's kind of different is there's this option for force v6 to v7 configuration upgrade. Now this is more or less only if you are coming from routers version 6 to version 7. If you are still using version 6, you kind of want to use this option if you want to use the new configuration syntaxes because a lot of things changes in version 7. You'd be surprised, but there are actually a lot of people that still use version 6 just because of the core functionality that might not still properly work on version 7. Although personally, I think version 7 is really, really neat and it is production ready in my opinion. Now, this is how you can go about resetting the configuration. Let's just actually do it and see what happens. So on my physical Microtik, let's go into Winbox and I can just set it that I want to keep my users 
and I can do a quick reset configuration. Sorry, I had that option to run a script afterwards, so we don't need to do that. So let's just click on reset configuration and it'll tell us, hey, are you sure? Then I can just say, okay. And now the MicroTik is going to reboot and it's going to reset its configuration. So I'm just going to pause the video here and then I'll start it back up again when the MicroTik can connect. All right, so my MicroTik has connected again. So now I can just reconnect to it and see what has happened, what has transpired. So if I connect on the MicroTik, I've still used my normal user credentials. And here I can see it's running the default configuration script. And this is actually going to instantly give me internet access because I was basically using the default configuration script from my machine. So if I just go into my command prompt, I can maybe do a ping to Google. And then we can see, hey, that response. So that's awesome. So I'm really happy with that. Now that we know that this works, how do we do the physical reset? So how do we do the physical reset? Well, it's actually straightforward. The basic thing is you should look at the MicroTik documentation because this will vary for each individual MicroTik. No, it, it's not really that it differs so much. It's more or less that the reset button might sit in different places on your devices. So you should see that it says reset on your MicroTik. And many times the MicroTiks make it easy where you can just push the reset button. And mainly what you want to do is you want to hold the reset button after you power on the MicroTik. So make sure it's powered off first. Then you hold in that reset button with your thumb first or whatever finger you prefer put in the power source and the moment it boots on, you're kind of going to wait five or 10 seconds or so until you see the LEDs either start flashing or stop flashing and become solid. Then you can leave your finger off of the reset button and it should then have factory reset it. So that is how you can do a hard physical reset. So that is really it. This shouldn't be too much of a difficult lecture or a video. Really, this should just have shown you how to factory reset your MicroTik and that you have that cool option or multiple different options that you can run inside of Winbox or the terminal in order to set some additional parameters when you factory reset or reset the configuration. I hope it's been informative. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.